morning. I'm in my greenhouse. There's lots to be done. I'm just watering the dahlia tubers. Some of them are already beginning to sprout, which is very exciting because I only potted them up. Oh, you can't see me. I don't know if this is going to work very well, actually. <laughs> Maybe not seeing me is preferable. <laughs> um, I only potted them up last weekend. Oh, I think it was last weekend. I've really lost track of time lately. I cannot believe that it is 3rd of April today. Madness. Um, I, I've got lots of things I want to talk to you about. Lots of things I want to show and share. And I say, oh, I want to show you and share them with you, but it's also for me because I like to kind of have a diary of these things. I've got my Clandon, my altered Clandon sweater off the needles, did that last night. And um, I've got a bit more of my soiree knitted so I can do a progress report on that. And I've made two dresses, this is one of them. It's the same pattern for both and I've actually done a, I'll say tutorial in bunny ear air quotes, um, kind of a, how I did it with the grey one that I made because I recommended it as a pattern for my friend to start with and, and then I bought it because from the line drawing it looked really easy and then I bought it and um, was actually not explained in a very easy way to understand for a newbie so I ended up starting making this video to help her and it ended up being a video that I'll share with everybody <laughs> it's a load of rubbish <laughs> so it's gonna I'll it's a separate video and I'll put it up after this so if you if you're not interested in that just don't watch it right I'm gonna water all my plants show you what's coming up I've got a fair bit of gardening to do I already feel like the garden's run away with me and it's just the start of the season. Winning! Starting here, I've got my dahlias. Look, I've got a couple of sprouts coming up there. And, whoops, I need to take you off my stick. Ooh! Sprout coming up there. And I saw another one. Oh, there. So I've got here Dahlia's Fleurel, Shiloh Noel, um, Snowfall, my writing's terrible, and one Aster. Then I've got some container sweet peas in there. They're a second sowing, and I've sown some sweet peas for Franca. While we're on the subject of sweet peas, here's my, they're called Tumbling Pink Cupid and they are, they just grow like a little lump, clump in a pot. And then I've got regular sweet peas, but a mouse came along and ate a load. So I've just re-sown, done a second sowing of some of them. I have some sweet corn coming up here. I've got a couple of trays of sweet corn. Let's chuck that into bed. Over there, underneath this um, bubble wrap that I got from a parcel ages ago, and I kept hold of it, I knew I'd need it in my greenhouse, I've got runner beans and climbing French beans. This is what I'm excited about. I have planted 100 Titan sunflower, I'm correcting myself now. Was it 50 or was it 100? How many came in the seed packet? Oh, it doesn't say. I feel like it's 100, but I am prone to exaggerating. And they're beginning to come up. So I have got loads. They're not all coming up yet. Back. Oh, hey guys. So when they're up, I can take the bubble wrap off. And I've also got 50 of these little Dorrit F1s. I'm going to have a little um, 
field of sunflowers. Look, they're coming up all right. I've also sown a few other seeds, but there's nothing to see there. Let's go out into the potage. Now, I watch a couple of podcasts. Well, are they podcasts or vlogs? They're homesteaders, and they call their potager a potage. What is it? Potager or potage? Does it depend on whether you're American or English? I don't know. My agapanthus are all coming back up. Look at that, Baba. Woohoo! Out here, I have got more weeding to do than I care to think about. But there's lots of lovely things coming up, like aquilegia and foxgloves, and something here that looks like a hollyhock. There's two of those, but I'm not really sure. They didn't do much last year. Who knows? I'll just let them grow until I can establish if they're a weed or something I want. I once nurtured ragwort for about three months, lovingly tended to it. I thought it was an aster, but it wasn't, it was a ragwort. Jobs to do today. Oh, blueberries are coming back, so that's good. Jobs to do today are, oh wow, look at that, that's pretty. That's a weed. It's an oxalis of some sort. It's so pretty. I wonder where you've come from. This is my raspberry patch. Last year it was rubbish. <laughs> oh, I hope I get a couple of raspberries this year. Things blew about in the storm, so I've got to somehow try to get those pots from there. Something's been digging in my garlic. Oh, wildlife. Not all of my cuttings took. They all looked like they were doing well, and then they took a turn for the worse. So I think I've only got one left, because I've given some away. Oh well, I'll leave them in. You never know. Garlic's looking all right though. Jobs for today are to sort out this strawberry bed. And then these, someone shouted at me. Who's that? Oh, it's a cyclist, no, they don't want me. And then these foxgloves aren't looking too great, but I think if I get them out of these pots and shove them in my flower bed, they're gonna go bonkers. I think that's a weed. I don't know what that was meant to be. And these rose cuttings don't look happy, but there's light. And whatever am I recording? I'm just gonna get on with the jobs and stop telling you <clears throat> what I'm doing. I'll see you later. Ah, oh, the prodigal son. There he is. Hello, darling. Hello. You come home for your lunch? Yeah. How are you? How's it been? Bumpy. Hey? Bumpy. Bumpy? Yeah. <laughs> Seat's broken. Oh, no. There we go. That's the strawberries done. I need to get some more straw for the strawberries. That'll all settle down and uh, the, they'll grow up through and they'll be fine. I've got so many. I've got so many left that I'm going to text my neighbour over the road and see if she wants any. Margot's around here somewhere. Poggy! Oh, there she is. Poodle! Margot! I think she might be about to go to the bathroom. Right, well, I think my head will be around there, won't it? That'll do. Okay. I'm in from the garden. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, oh, got my earpods in. Hold on. Hold on, you lot. Oh, there's a shadow from the iPhone, look. 
Okay, I'm comfy now. I'm curled up on the sofa. Got my feet up here. We've got hand knit socks on. I've got my stuff all around me. I've got a dog there who's looking at me because she wants to come up. You're coming up. I just sat down. Oh no, there's another dog. I sat down to write out a few notes, things I wanted to chat about, and couldn't remember anything. We never ever get any peace. There's other people in this house that live here who you girls could go and cuddle, you know? You're making a mess of everything. <sighs> Come on then, let's get the cuddles done. Oh, this is nice. Stop moaning, Margot. Don't bully me, bunny. Don't start scratching me. Yeah. Hi. You all right? No, don't scratch my face. This isn't going to work. Pain in the bums. Sometimes setting up for a podcast just seems so difficult. I wonder, is it ever worth it? Now I'm trying to make things look nice. Don't worry, this is a battery candle. Look, you can even stick it up your nose. <laughs> You can tell I got three boys, can't you? Gosh, such a kid. Oh, coffee. I need it. Settle down. Oh, I've had so many false starts. Right, I want to share my Clandon sweater, which I've finally finished. Here it is. I'll pop some pictures in of how it's supposed to look. I'll do a cutaway so you can see both at the same time. I decided to carry on with my pattern all the way down because I was enjoying it so much. It made me feel clever, even though it was so simple. And after about three of these, I didn't even need to look at the chart again once, other than to make sure I was doing my increases at the correct points. And I went all the way down the sleeves. Um, lovely bishop sleeves these are with a twisted rib cuff I did one of they one of they oh Somerset I am one of they Italian bind offs an Italian sewn bind off which I really like I really really like that um, I made a pig's ear of it there because I was doing it wrong but it's fine that was the first few stitches. I soon got into the swinger. Oh, and I did it wrong there as well. But who cares? I'll show you something else I did wrong. And I don't give the monkeys. <laughs> this was this was a test knit. The test knit ended and it was released weeks and weeks ago. <laughs> I'm so rubbish, but Amy's a good friend. She doesn't mind. She loves me anyway. Look, I forgot to do one of they there. What's going on with my Somerset accent today? So what I'm going to try to do, I don't know if this will be successful, is knit one and stitch it on or possibly do a duplicate stitch. It's me from the future just trying to show you how I'm how I'm remedying the, the bit that I missed. Mm, I'm not sure this is showing up very well. So I've done my increases into one of the bars, one of the legs of the stitch. And then I purled back along. So that's my, in a sense, my first row of stitches. So oh, look at me where I've been gardening. So I'll carry on doing what I have to do to make this little motif and then I think I'll just stitch it down with one of the tails. I'll be back in a minute. There, so I've got the little leaf. I just need to stitch it down now. It's done. Well, it's not perfect, but I tell you what, I'm pretty pleased with myself. That's not bad. 
think unless you were looking, you wouldn't know which one it was. I've made worse mistakes and lived with them, so calling that a success. I've got loads of yarn left. I had three of these skeins that Amy gave me. It's the Dandelion and Dogwood Cashmere Alpaca Silk Base in Kaya's Shells, or Kaya's Seashells. So it's got all these lovely, beautiful little flecks in there. So this, when teamed with this floof, I think I used three and a half skeins of that. Um, you get this kind of, Amy described it as a mother of pearl effect. She's not wrong. It's just really, really beautiful. I shall pop it on later and take some footage. But it's it's lovely, it fits really well. It's not a crop, but it's also not long. I haven't even blocked this and look how well the stitch definition is. I don't even intend to block it. I'm just gonna wear it and it can block with the warmth and the curvature of my body. I've got baskets at my feet here and I'm going to just pick up things and chat about them as they, as they appear. Like every man and their dog, I'm doing a tank top vest type thing. I have a Zoom group and um, Sandra, Sandra Cherry Hart and Claire Bird, Bird Street Yarn um, and I decided, well, it, the whole, was the whole group going to do a tank top along? Or, oh, I can't remember now. But anyway, we three are doing it. I think Claire's nearly done. Sandra's put, I think she's cast on her second one. And this is all I've got of mine. And I'm knitting it with um, this really funny yarn, which is from Heather and Hops. And it's um, Jacobs and Valace. So it's very irregular. And I've talked about this before, if, if if you've been here before, this is repetitive. So it's coming up in this really unusual texture, which I rather like. Oh, here comes Bill. Hi, Bill. Oh, whatever's the matter. Oh dear, he's not happy. Where was I? <laughs> so I've got this funny sort of texture coming along and I'm knitting the Thea tank top, pop a picture in. Um, and I do still want the Thea tank top and I think that it's going to look lovely in this yarn but Sandra's Perec is perfect I know she wants to change the front to a v-neck but I really really like it and my friend Wendy has knitted um, one of the petite knit vests tank tops and I really like hers and I want hers. I'll put a picture in here. I'll chop her head off because I haven't asked permission. And then Jules, so sweet Violet, she's done the gan. And that's gorgeous and I want that too. So this is such scratchy yarn. I've got an itchy face. I can give it a scratch. So yeah, so yeah. That is a very overused phrase and it's woven its way into my vernacular. So, so go and have a look at Sandra Cherry Hart at her Perec and So Sweet Violet at her The Gam and, um, and then you'll have a, a glimpse of what might be coming in my future. That's that talked about then. Now you guys know I've got 42, well 44 now, project bags. Uh, and here I am still using this because I'm rubbish. I just keep everything in a basket. I actually, I like project bags, but I'm lazy. I'm not lazy. I just never get around to doing a bag shuffle. Look at this lovely bag from my friend Catherine, Bed of Roses, and uh, we're doing our little casual knit-along 
last year we started knitting it might have been even the tail end of 2020 we started knitting the girlfriend's cardigan together and um we we would end up overtaking one another so one of us would get further ahead than the other and put it down and then the other one would get would catch up and then go ahead and it was really good because it meant that we were able to ask one another oh how long did you knit that for especially useful for me because i'd changed my gauge completely because i'd used a completely different yarn um and we enjoyed doing our knit along together so we're doing it again and we're doing i've said all this before so i'm repeating myself we're doing the soiree from this book knits about winter by emily foden here we go that'd be it isn't it beaut might be one more picture oh it's going to be the thumbnail isn't it this is as far as i've got so i'm not very far along at all but isn't it gorgeous i won't go on too much about the yarn and all of that because we're going away for a week next week well it's supposed to be two weeks we're going away for but things keep shifting and changing there's there's just so much going on in life at the moment so i might get that done in my downtime when we're on holiday when i'm not being chalet girl I'm all over the place today. I did tell you, didn't I, about the yarn that my clandon was knitted in, didn't I? It was fingering in the um, Alpaca Silk Cashmere Blend. And then this is just plain fairground, which is Suri Silk Alpaca. And I knitted it on a 4.5 needle, 3.5 for the rib. I've talked about it so much throughout February files that I don't feel I really need to talk much more about it. And by the time you see this, there will be a Ravelry page linked below. Ah, I was keeping all the yarn in this little bag that my friend Laura made me. Bless her heart. Um, and I've actually got more than I realised of that. So I think this this only used about two and a half skeins of yarn mad for such a warm cozy thick jumper brilliant very economical this is as far as i've got with my half and half wrap so that'll get some love in the coming weeks just in time for the hot weather. I've got a few things. That's terrible English. I've received a few things recently and I've bought something as well. So I'll show you the thing that I bought first. I bought a ball winder. And it is completely beautiful. It's got little cork discs on the bottom so you don't scratch your table. I've just taken this off so that it doesn't stretch out whilst it's not in use. But the movement is so smooth. It's silent. When I think about how rubbish my little plasticky one was, this is just beautiful. I should pop on the screen who it's by. Uh, they don't have an actual shop. But who told me about this? I know who told me about it. She's one of my testing buddies for Amy, uh, Fibre Wolf Company. She said that this she got hers from these people and it's absolutely brilliant. And they make everything by hand and they're um, independent. So that tickled my fancy. And they're European, so less air miles and what have you. Um, what you do is you just 
direct message them or email them all their information's on their Instagram page and then they send you a PayPal invoice and you just PayPal them and then they post it out to you. Wonderful, I'm so thrilled with it. And the actual ball that it makes is stunning. I don't know if I've got one to hand that I can show you. No, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, so I bought that myself um because i wanted one and i gave my friend wendy the little plastic one it works absolutely fine i just wanted a really i just i just wanted one all right the plastic one offended me it was so ugly then for christmas my mum gave me a 30 pound voucher for, for um beaches and birdsong so i sat thinking for quite a long time about what I wanted what I would quite like to knit and then decided that um I would need three skeins so I added some money to my voucher so that I could get three skeins and I went for this colorway which is called Angelica and this is Josie's four ply diamond four ply it's 80% superwash 20 merino 20% silk and um, it's just beautiful it's absolutely beautiful <laughs> so having sat there and thought for ages look she gave a little progress marker um having sat there for ages deliberating what color what thing to knit I still don't know. I do not know what this is going to be. But the one thing I do know is is that I I reached capacity. Cap I reached capacity with my yarn collection, which is in this cupboard, a while ago. And since then, I cashed my voucher in for these, and I've been sent other yarn. I can take no more. <laughs> I can buy no more. That's it. I've been saying this for years, but now I absolutely mean it. I can't take in any more yarn. My birthday's coming up next month. I'm going to tell everybody I know who will want to buy me a gift, don't buy me yarn. <laughs> I'm going to say, if you want to buy me a gift, and I know what it's like when you want to buy someone a gift, I'm going to say, I would like beeswax church pillar candles or beeswax taper candles. That's what I'd like. Or bags of compost. I need that. <laughs> or... Ask me what Liberty Fat Quarters I'm after because going back to Sandra, she oops, she has made a stunning quilt of the month block over the past year called something like Flower Garden. I, I can actually tell you because I, I've got it here. Hang on, I'll open it. Flower Garden Quilt block of the month when I first saw Sandra doing this and I think Jules is doing one similar hers might might be radiant stars the one that Jules is go is doing and Jules from so sweet violet had um she'd done all of the white connecting pieces with this fabric that had got text on it and she didn't like it after a while so she put it to one side and now she's working on it again I don't know how far she's got but Sandra Cherry Hart has completed hers and shown it on her podcast possibly the same podcast as she showed her Perec um tank top I couldn't stop thinking about it this is what it looks like absolutely loved it i just i loved how it looked but more than that i loved how i thought it would feel to make it i enjoy doing english paper piecing i've 
got a quilt on the go in there, which I've actually gone off a bit, but I enjoy doing it. And I've got one up there, which is all hexagons. <laughs> so my youngest, Wilf, just came in and looked at me and went, chicken, and walked off. So I was picking Sandra's brains about it and said, uh, she's not, Alice Caroline, there's her information. She's not doing this kit anymore, otherwise I probably would have bought it. Um, I said, do you reckon I could do it myself? And she said, yeah, totally, totally you could. So she sent me, um, So Sandra's loaned me these, the booklets, which tells you what the fabric was and how to, what the fabric is and how to place all of the pieces together. So I have gone through and picked out all the stars and flowers that I really, really love and think would go well in my home. That one, that one. That one, pretty much all the dark ones. That one, that one, that one, that one. And I've ordered everything I need from the Alice Caroline website to do my own version. Of course, I don't quite at the moment know how much fabric I will need of what. So I've just bought enough to do the first couple of um, flowers. I, I really would have if if she was still making the, the kits have joined in with the with the quilt of the month. But because she isn't doing that, I'm doing the next best thing, which is kind of making my own and shopping on Alice Caroline's website. So I don't feel like I'm being a cheeky monkey. I would feel like I was being a cheeky monkey if I just borrowed all of these booklets and then didn't credit or didn't purchase anything from Alice Caroline I think that would I'd have felt I mean that's probably fine to do but I'd have felt really bad so I'm extremely excited about about doing this I'm really grateful that I've been given the opportunity so late after that that just makes no sense bloody hell I'm struggling Right, I've really <laughs> floundered my whole way through this podcast. It's absolutely diabolical, but I'm still going to edit it and put it out. And usually they're never as bad as I think. So coming up after this will be another video, which will show how I made the grey version of this dress and this dress here, which is a Stylark dress. And um, well, I chatted about it earlier on, so I wouldn't bother watching that if you. I would only bother watching that if you're actually going to make the dress. There's not really any point in watching it if you're not going to make the dress. There's obviously all the usual waffle in between, but mostly it's just right. Here's the bodice and now I'm sticking on the bias binding and this is how I do it. And I've, I'm doing French seams here because the dress itself in the pattern has a self-lined bodice. And it's not as a newbie, it's not easy to follow. And even um, even though I, I wouldn't say I'm an accomplished sewer, I've done enough to be able to fathom most things out. And although I fathomed it out, I did have to scratch my head a bit. I know I thought to myself, it could be easier than this. It could be more simple for a new sewer to do. I actually think that the lined bodice was, is probably extremely quick and has a much nicer finish. And I will give, a, give that a go at some point, but um, this, Doing it this way with bias binding is just so easy. Okay, I'm going to go and uh, sort out a roast dinner. We are, I might make a pudding. I've got frozen raspberries. What I could do, I could do a raspberry clafouti. I've got loads of um, 
eggs. Don't have any cream though. I don't want to go to the shop. I shall go now. Thank you ever so much for watching. I apologise for the state of this podcast. Maybe it's been all right. It doesn't feel like it's been all right. <laughs> Just <gasps> terrible. I'll have to up my game in the notes down below. I'll have to make sure I've got um, some Ravelry links and bits and pieces <laughs> to try and make up for how lacking this has been. <laughs> Never mind, hey. If you don't like it, you can all, you'll have switched off ages ago. Yeah. Thanks ever so much then. And I will see you another day, possibly. If you ever come back. I forgot to say, I'm still selling things as I come across them on eBay um, for the Red Cross to help support the Ukraine crisis. Um... I don't know of any raffles or anything going on at the moment. There's, there were a lot to begin with and they've, there's not, I don't know of any at the moment. So anyway, I'm still selling off things and I've raised over £500 for the Red Cross. So I'm feeling very good about that. Not least, I feel like um, it's it's been very rewarding for me because I've been able to help. But also, I've been able to declutter and get rid of things that had been weighing on my mind for a really long time. And I was I felt unable to get rid of them before, but they were stifling me. And now they're gone. It's brilliant. There's all sorts of things still for sale and there's all sorts of things coming up. So that will be linked below as well. Okay. All right then, toodaloo. Mm -hmm.